What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, model car garage mechanics. Well, we've got another great Japanese car for you today. It is the 1978 Nissan Cedric, and you can also build this as the Nissan Gloria. And this is a great model kit from Aoshima in 124 scale. It is also a four door, just like that Ford Galaxy Taxi that I did last week. And this one is really cool. So without any further delays, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. And now let's wind the clock all the way back to 1978 as we look at this Nissan Cedric or Gloria 4HT280E Brome. So this model kit, you can actually, you've got your choice of either building it as the Cedric or the Gloria. I'm not really sure on these cars which one was the higher class model. I do believe it's the Gloria. But at any rate, we can see the two different cars on the box top. One of them being white for the Cedric and the Gloria being sort of a maroon or a brown. On this side of the box, we get two wonderful photographs of the built up model the front three-quarter view and the rear three-quarter view. And I do believe that this is the Gloria. On this side of the box, we get a paint chart. And these are the colors we will need for the model. I do believe these are either Gunsy Sagno or Mr. Hobby. Now let's take the lid off this wonderful model kit by Aoshima and check out what's inside. A little bit of a complication there. All right, so right away we get our instruction sheet. We've got our decal sheet. Then we have the undercarriage here molded as one piece. We also have our glass with a lot of glass components. We've got chrome and white plastic parts in this bag, followed by white and black parts in this bag. There's a lot of wheel options in this kit, as you can see here. And then here we've got our body, which is quite nicely molded. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Then we get our tires and we even have some real springs, which is really cool in there, as well as screws and looks like a license plate shroud. So I'll just clear this out of the way and then we'll take a look at those instructions. The first image we get of our model from the instruction sheet is of the Cedric. So this shows you all the different paint colors and decal locations for the side and the top and the front and the back. And as you can see, we've got these taillights on here, which are almost reminiscent of 1968 Mercury Cougar in a lot of ways. And the front has these really rectangular headlights on it, as well as this nice little peaked grill in here. Our next image is of the Gloria. And here we have the side view, the top view, the front and the rear. And as you'll note, the rear tail lamp assembly is quite different from that of the Cedric. It's a lot longer, it looks like, with a bigger area here for opening up the trunk, almost integrated as one piece. Now the paint colors, I do believe, are different on here. I'd have to actually take a look because they are written in Japanese for the colors. So again, it is quite the thing. In assembly step number one, we begin with our chassis installation of all our components, starting with the front king pins. And we're going to add a rivet in through this hole and into the wheel. It's interesting that it doesn't show any assembly in here for the wheel and tire going together. So you're just going to have to imagine that the tire squishes into the wheel. But at any rate, this is what you're looking at. So right and left hand side, it all depends on where the pin is. So the right hand side and the left hand side are going to have the pin in two different locations so that they end up like this. Then these parts go through the spring and then into this collar right here. And then we have our rack and pinion steering, which clicks in onto these pins here and here. And uh, that is what it looks like once you're hooking it all together. So these are down this way pointing downward, I do believe, and then the rack and pinion C-clip goes right onto the pin here. Image two and three continue with the installation of our front end. So here we have the lower A-arms being dropped into place. You would glue them in here and here, but leave these holes open so that you can turn your wheels. 
And then we have a little bit of cover-up pieces here. So we have a front splash apron going into those holes with an anti-sway bar up here, and then part of our steering mechanism going into the back. Oh, as well as these little towing hooks being glued up to the front of the chassis. Panels 4 and 5 pertain to the back end of the car. This looks like it was set up for an electric engine at one point in time, because here you have the U-shape and the little double clips. The double clips would have gone on for the gears right in here. We also have this little, uh, looks like almost a hinge end going on this side. And that will all go into the chassis. And then back here we have a spring mount. And that is for springing in this rear end. Panel 6 shows our rear tires going on. And here they use a double spacer. So at one point in time this would have been a gear for going into that electric motor. And there's a bunch of the clearances as you'll see on the rear wheel openings for all that engine component stuff. So if you do find an electric motor and some gears, you can always hook this in in order to make your car move. So there it shows which wheel you're going to be using. So this one's got the long shaft sticking out the one side. So I guess this one does not. But basically these all go on the metal axle and they go through those holes in the back. Panel 7 shows more of that electric engine type of stuff. So this little box would have originally been for the AA batteries, one beside each other. And it also has a little clip on the bottom to lock in place that rack and pinion steering. So these are held down by the two metal screws as seen there. And then there's this little ridge on here, or a platform, and that's for gluing on your floor pedals. Over into panel 8 we have our drive shaft going into our rear axle from the back of the transmission. We have the transmission support bar being glued in place and leaf springs going over top of the rear axle, as well as the spare tire right here, or possibly the fuel tank being glued in on the bottom of the chassis. Panel 9 completes the undercarriage by adding in shock absorbers with the shock tower mounts on the back of the leaf springs, as well as our rear muffler here, our tailpipe and mufflers, and this muffler extension piece which goes on the end. Panel 10 shows our dashboard being assembled. Here we have the gauges which mount in from the back, which is really nice because you can paint these separately on the bench and then add them in instead of trying to take your brush and go down around all this detail just to get at the gauges. And then here we have our steering column with the uh, gear or turn lever as well as an option of two different steering wheels, so one being factory and one being a racing wheel, probably from Momo. Panel 11 shows our seat assembly here, as well as the rear package shelf. So what we have first is the back seat and the rear package shelf being assembled. So we have our back seat, rear package shelf, this vent that goes back in here, as well as these really killer speakers for our surround sound in our car. Up front here is the front seats, so we have the seat bottom, the seat back, and the headrest all gluing into position. Panel 12 shows all our components going together into the chassis for our final interior assembly. So here we have the center console, with the center console, the gear shift lever, and the parking brake all being glued in place. This will go right down here between the two front seats, which will glue in onto these seat mounting points, as well as the back seat, which glues in here. We have optional bucket seats for this car if you want to give your Cedric or Gloria a more a racing appearance. And then all of that will follow up with our dashboard being glued into place right across here. Panel 13 shows a deviation between the Cedric and the Gloria. So we're going to start with our Cedric right here. We have all our interior door panels being painted up. And note the paint colors because they are different between the Cedric and the Gloria. So these will glue into place on these little tabs inside the body. And then our glass will go in here. There's these two little posts that you need to remove and clean up with your number 16 hobby blade in order to get the glass in. It is also saying on these shaded areas that you could cut them out if you wanted it to make it look like the side glass is actually rolled down. 
Here's the build-up for the Gloria, and it does look much the same as a Cedric, but again, like I said before, the paint colors are different into the door panels. So once again, we have our window glass and our body, and all you need to do is remove the post to get the glass into place. Step 13 continued is the upper roof console, which is both in the Cedric and the Gloria. Now here are the differences. One is painted in a different color than the other. Yeah, right in here and right in there. So that's for the center console. But as you can see, you've got your rear view mirror, which glues right into that notch. And then the whole assembly glues up into the center of the roof. Panel 14 shows the assembly of the front end of the Cedric. So this is pretty cool. This is an aluminum number plate. And then you apply your decal on here for your license plate. And then you glue it to the front of your bumper. So we have the two ver uh, horizontal grills which go in place right in the center. And then we have our headlights, and the headlight actually mounts in from the back, which again is really cool, because you don't have to try to paint it or whatever from the front. Then we have our front splash pan and turn signal lights, as well as other little components going up in the front. And all this will glue together to the front end to create the Cedric. If you choose to build the Gloria instead, the front end goes together basically the same. The only difference is these horizontal bars are numbered 72 and 71, whereas on the Cedric they were numbered 51 and 50. But basically it's the same, so the bars go in the front and then all this goes in together, which goes on the front as well. And you still get the aluminum number plate going in here and a license plate decal. Panel 15 shows our rear build of the Cedric to start with. So here we have all our tail lamps, which again are mounted from the back end of the chrome rear taillight shroud. We also have our rolled pan with little bumpers rolling around the side and what looks like more towing hooks. Oh no, that's a overrider on the front bumper. And then here we have another aluminum license plate being glued into place and all our paint for the rear taillights. Now, if you want to build the Gloria, the difference in components are the rear taillights and the taillight shroud. So again, these are all painted like this. So it looks like red for here and here, possibly clear, and then amber on this end. Although I'm not totally sure. You'll have to look at the real car because these are all in Japanese again. <laughs> There's our rear bumper, the aluminum license plate, the bumper guards, and the wraparound for the bumper on the back. Once you have your body all complete, you can add it to the chassis by first putting the chassis into the front end of the car and then slightly bending it to lock it into the back end. Panel 17 completes the front end of the car by adding in your mirrors and the center bit for your hood right here, as well as your windshield wipers. On this side of the instruction sheet is an entire parts detail for the model, including all the parts we're going to use for the kit, and the grayed out parts here are the ones that are not in use on the kit. Here we have the body for the Nissan Gloria slash Cedric, and as you can see it is wonderful. We have a nice little grill right up here on our cowl, and there's all the hood element as well as the front end. You can see it's sunken in back here, and that's to accommodate all the little lights and everything else. One thing that is interesting is that it does have a cutout so that you can add in an opening hood, but it doesn't have any of the engine details since it was designed as a simple, you know, flat little car. The opening hood might be so that you can, you know, change the batteries in here. I don't know what the intention was really, but you could add in a Chevy V8 underneath or something like that and have an opening hood so you can see what's going on. Or try to duplicate the actual Cedric motor uh, using plastic sheets and shapes. So those are the posts that need to be chopped out of here. And uh, once they're gone, then you can put the glass in nice and easily. Now, looking at the side of the body, you can see the wonderful like turn signal lenses on here and the little emblems as well as the chrome going up around the wheel arches. It does have Gloria, you know, the script for the Gloria right in the side here. So if you wanted to make the other one, you could easily remove this area. There it also has a nice little emblem on the side. You can see the four doors with the door handles. These are much like the um, later GM style door handle that lifted up, sort of around 
I think 1974 they brought those in, or 73. Look at the back end. Look at that detail on here. That's just like a real car stamping underneath. Again, this is sunken in quite deep, as you can see, for those tail lamps. And actually, you know what? There's little holes right in here, if you can see, right there. And I do believe that would be to put a wire in through here. Let's see up front. Maybe it's the same. I don't know. But I would think that would be to put a wire up there, paint this silver inside here, and then put a light in there, an LED or something, and have it wired up into those batteries. So when you turn the car on, it's got your taillights going on. And possibly the headlights as well would uh, mount in here, and I guess that's why this is sunken in so deep. So if you really want to add in some electrical features into your Cedric slash Gloria, you could do that easily with this model. Next up we have our underpan, or our chassis, and what we have here is it actually, going back to that opening hood, take a look at this. You've got a charcoal canister right in there, as well as the tops of the McPherson struts, and uh, I guess some little spots where you could put a battery or something like that. So if you didn't want the electric or um, AA batteries up front in here, you could actually build a slight engine bay inside here and make it look pretty cool. So again, this is the cutout for the, or not the cutout, but the stamping for that a little electric motor for the small gear to be sticking up through the top and the motor to be back here somewhere. Turning it upside down, you can see the nice engine detail in here, as well as the rear axle, which looks really thin, you know, compared to like a GM axle or something. I wonder if they actually molded this correctly. I mean, where would you put the differential gears? This thing's almost like a flat, straight line across. At any rate, this has a full perimeter frame in here. Uh, not too sure if this is actually meant to be a unibody car, but still, there is a full frame underneath. And the unibody being out here? I don't know. What are your thoughts? If any of you owned a Gloria, let me know in the comments down below. But here, I think the other thing, remember that weird spring arrangement in the back? I think you can slide this back and forth. Might be something to engage the engine in on the rear axles. I wonder. Maybe that explains why this is up like this. So that the motor can go up into it a little bit. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what the intention is with this. Maybe if somebody had an earlier version of this Gloria model with the instructions that show the electric engine going in it, that might be a great help. This parts tree contains many of the interior and suspension components for our Gloria. So here we have the rear seat, the bucket seats, the engine mount, and a butt. Oh, that little front splash apron. We also have our steerable wheels and the crossover right up here. Now, one of these fell off, but it is in the bag. So, thank goodness. <laughs> Take a look at the detail on that rear seat. It's pretty cool. You also have the rear wheel arches right into the seat backs. That must have been kind of uncomfortable to sit on. But uh, here we have the front seats. And again, look at the nice detail on here. It's pretty clean and crisp. There's the fuel cell or the spare tire uh, holder. Kind of not too sure on that. Again, if you had a Gloria, let me know. Look at the rear springs. They're pretty flat, actually. Uh, not much of a curve in them. Then there's the front uh, lower A-arms, as well as our windshield wipers, which I thought would have been in chrome. And there's our rack and pinion right there. Again, really nicely done and quite simplistic. Turning it over, you can see a mesh in the back of the seats. There aren't any mold marks in there, which is nice. So again, really cool stuff. Uh, lots of mold marks in this battery box, though. <laughs> practically everywhere. But overall, I do believe this will end up looking quite nice once you get it all assembled. Next up, we have our interior panels as well as exterior panels. And there are some pieces on here that we're not going to be using because something like this is for the Nissan Skyline with the angled headlights in it. 
But over here we have our Gloria Cedric headlights, which we're going to be using. Here's that extra bucket seat. There is only one, so unfortunately you can't have a left and right hand side unless you buy two models of this. But um, you could use this as a race car. I do believe this panel is also not used. I'm not sure which car it comes from. Probably that Nissan Skyline thing. But take a look at those nice door panels. They are really nicely molded. And being separate, of course, you can get all that great detail in the casting. So there's our stock steering wheel. And over on this end, we have the racing steering wheel. Take a look at those speakers. They're really cool looking. Your uh, tweeters and subwoofers, whatever. There's that overhead console looking like something out of Star Trek. Look at that interesting thing right there. Again, really cool again. And again and again, look at those headlights and we get part of the grill in here. Almost sort of like a Dodge. Almost like a, a 71 Charger or something. There's that package shelf. We got the vent going into the trunk, which again is really interesting. It's probably a rear window defroster. And then the steering console as or column as well as our <clears throat> parking brake. There's a little vent which goes into here. Again, really nicely detailed. On the back, there are some mold marks, so you might need to get rid of them just to get the parts to fit in here. But overall, really awesome detailing and casting from Aoshima. Next up, we have some really cool parts trees, and some of them that I find, they have some parts on here that are a little redundant, but they might have actually built this as two separate cars back in the day. So up top, we either have the Cedric rear panel, or the Gloria rear panel on here, but everything else seems to be the same. The dashboard's the same, the center console is the same, these panels are the same as well as the center grills. Although, no, they are different because remember one is 72 and 71 and one is in the 50s. So I do believe it was the Cedric which was in the 50s and the Gloria which was the 72s. But basically there's the two panels check out these optional wheels you get. These are like wire style, and then these are flat discs with slots in them. And then here's the bumpers, wraparounds. And I do believe this is a spoiler, but it's not actually part of the kit, although you could add it on if you wanted to. So let's just move some of these components out of the way and take a look at the rear panel here. So again, it's really wonderful looking. I thought this was chrome, but it's not. So it's probably a painted panel. If it is chrome, a Molotol pen would work really well on here, or some silver paint. Take a look at all that dashboard detail. Really cool again. The only uh, sad part is it's the left right-hand side <clears throat> instead of left-hand side, so it'd be kind of hard to reverse this dashboard around if you wanted it to be more North American. Although I don't think I've ever seen a Cedric or a Gloria here in Canada. So I do believe this would be basically a European, maybe British import kind of export car. But overall, I mean, these parts are really nicely molded and look really cool. So let's take a look at the Gloria, I do believe, one or the other. <laughs> so anyway, there's the rear panel again. Almost reminiscent of Dodge in a way, possibly Ford even. Again, the instrument panel is about the same, but these are different. There's a little vertical bar in the center of the horizontal bars. But overall, again, really nicely detailed. Take a look at these wheels. You can use these on other models as well. Nice stuff. Oh yeah, so there it is shortened down below. And then here it's long all the way to the end for that center mounting post. So again, that's the way they work. There are some old marks on the back of the wheels, which you can sand down flat with a sandpaper block, but those are really nice. Now looking at the other wheels, again, you got the flat end. You can see which ones are narrower and which ones go into the back for the wider wheels. But boy, those are really nice racing style, very basic. And again, need to sand down the flats. It doesn't show you using these little tubes for anything, but uh, what it looks like is one's short and one's long, so I guess those would go into the back to extend these out somehow for the rear axles. <clears throat> Overall, this is really cool what we have going on for our parts here. So I'll just bring them back into the camera for one more shot. 
and there they are. Here we have the chrome components for our Gloria, and these would be the factory stock wheels that basically look a lot like the brome style wheels of the American cars of the 70s. And there we've got our front and rear bumpers, as well as our rear view mirror and a bunch of the little chrome extensions. The, uh, that's for the tailpipe there, our side mirrors, and then here we've got a console again in chrome. I'm not sure if we use that in this kit or not. Looks like another little side mirror or something. And then the bumper overriders. So let's bring these up to the camera, starting with the wheels. Again, look at how nice those are. Very much like the American cars, sort of even Ford Granada or something. There's the wheels again. It's all done the same way. Got the mold marks in the back, so sand those off and then paint the outer rims with chrome or use that Molotol chrome pen. And then take a look at the bumpers. Really nice and crisp detail on there. They almost look like real steel stamped bumpers. A lot of little mold marks in the back. Remember to paint the inside flat black so it doesn't, you know, stand out when you're looking at it from the back of the car, because they're not really supposed to. And then that center console again looks really good. I do believe it's the overhead one for a different car. But overall, again, really nicely done. And then we get the little bumper overriders, which are quite simplistic, as well as this little square. Oh, that's the center for the hood. That's what that is. So if you want that chrome, that's the little part you use. But again, overall, these are really nicely done, even though you don't get much chrome in this kit. Here we get the glass components for our Gloria. And you know one thing I've noticed about this kit? There isn't any flash on it. It looks fantastic for the casting. So anyway, here's our Gloria kit. Oh, and take a look at the instruments here. They are molded on the clear. So that means you paint the back of the instruments and then you've got the glass panel. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, there's our headlights on here, as well as the different tail lamps and the little front turn signal lights. And there's our window right there. So let's bring this up to the camera and really inspect it. Look at the nice detail on here. The nice thing about the rectangular headlights is you won't ever get those uh, put in the wrong way. So you don't have the north and south, east and west crosshatch issue. Take a look at the back. You got the rear defrosters molded right into the glass. Boy, Aoshima really does a nice kit. There's those instruments again. So you would paint them and then they'd have the clear panel over the front. Really awesome stuff. Like, they really paid attention to the detail on here. So again, nice done, nicely done by Aoshima. And boy, this will really look good once you get it all built up. Here we have the Pirelli Cinturato C7 tires for the model kit, as well as the aluminum license plate shrouds. And then here I'm going to keep these in the bag for this video because I don't want to lose them. But I've got the three springs for the kit, two of them for the front axle, and then the weird shaped one in here for the back for that electric motor to fit into. And then we have our rear axle as well as these front rivets which act as our front axles. And then we've got the little metal screws. So let's take a look at these tires in better detail. They do look pretty nice. So there you can see a nice tread pattern on them. There is a line up the center, so you're going to have to spin those with your tire spinner. And then the front tires are much the same, except they are narrower, as we can see there. But overall, they are nice. They are made out of real rubber, nice and squishy, and you can smell the uh, polyvinyl smell, or whatever it is, of this rubberized material. So again, really excellent stuff and will look great on your model once you spin the tires. And if you want to know about how to perfect these tires, check out this video up here. Here we have our decal sheet, and this thing is really quite wonderful. It's got all the little emblems here for your Gloria or your Cedric. So you would sand off the one on the side of the body, which I showed before, and use these instead. But again, really cool. They've even got some for erasing on here. And they also have these little symbols, which I'm not really sure what they are. I don't know my Japanese cars that well, but I do believe these go on the windshield and other weird places. We also have these side trim decals, which are really wonderful. We've got a lot of variations for license plates on here. So this is really interesting. So you've got Cedric ones as if they were at a car dealership with the black background. 
Gloria ones for a car dealership with a black background. Then down here, you could have the same one here, but paint your own background in there, like red or blue or whatever, and then apply these decals on the top. And then we have our license plates, which I'm not quite sure why they did it this way, but at any rate, you have the white background and your green numbers. And then here you have no background, but you got the same green numbers, but they should also be white. For uh, That's really all I know for Japanese plates. They all have a white background. But again, these are what they all are. And the different numbers on here, like up above, stand for different car classes and that sort of thing. Japanese plates, I don't really understand compared to the Canadian and North American ones where I live, you know. So if someone could explain this down below. I did look it up online once, but I don't know where it... <laughs> What I did with that bookmark for that page. But overall, again, you can see just how wonderful these are. Look at the different emblems you get for either the Gloria or the Cedric. Again, really excellent and a nice decal sheet. Well, I hope you enjoyed that unboxing video where I got to show you this amazing 1978 Nissan Cedric or Gloria, depending on which way you want to build it, by Aoshima. And if you're looking for some great model car kits, why not check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca in our model car section, where we have model car kits from all makes and manufacturers from all over the world. And if you want to help support this channel financially to make it grow, please consider becoming a member. And for as little as $3 a month, you can help our channel grow tremendously so that we can get new video equipment and model cars and whatnot to review and everything else. So check that out. The membership button is down below right on this channel. So until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.